Hey everyone, this is Chris Henry with Oceanside Photo and Telescope, and today I'm going to talk to you about balancing an equatorial mount. Now for those of you who are new to the hobby, you may be asking yourself, why do I need to balance an equatorial mount? Can't I just point it towards the North Pole, turn it on, and have it take great pictures? Not exactly. There are three main reasons why you want to balance your equatorial mount. Safety of your equipment, your telescope and your camera, the longevity of the motors in your mount, and the tracking accuracy which affects every picture you take with that mount. First of all, safety. I can't tell you how many times I've had customers tell me they've put their telescope and camera on their mount first without the counterweights on, they accidentally unlocked their right ascension axis, and they heard the worst sound you can possibly hear at a star party or at a night imaging that of their telescope or camera running into their tripod. For that reason, you always want to put the counterweights on before you put the telescope on, and the telescope and camera are the first thing that comes off when you're breaking down. Secondly, the longevity of the motors is affected if, if you're out of balance. You have to consider that if the motors are working harder to push the telescope up compared to the counterweights, that it's going to shorten the lifespan of those motors over time. And you may find yourself having to send your mount in for warranty repair, but depending on the nature of damage, using the mount incorrectly might not be covered by the warranty. On high-end mounts, you may run into an issue where the mount actually stalls rather than damage the motors. So you need to get the mount close enough to balance to prevent motor stall. Lastly, if you're out of balance, you're going to have issues with tracking accuracy. If the motor has to push too hard in one direction as opposed to the other, then your tracking may suffer. The mount may track slower than the sky is moving, giving you star trails when you want nice crisp points for stars. When you're balancing the mount in RA, it's relatively simple. You take your mount with the telescope on top and the counterweights on the bottom. You rotate it to the side with the telescope on one side counterweights on the other, and the counterweight bar parallel to the ground. If you unlock the right ascension axis lock, whichever side drops, the telescope or the counterweights, is the heavy side. And you need to adjust the counterweights up or down until you can let go with the axis unlocked and neither side drops. Once you've accomplished this, you want to lock the right ascension axis with the telescope in the same position. Telescope on its side, counterweight shaft parallel to the ground. If you then go over to the declination axis, unlock that, you have the back end of the telescope and the front end of the telescope. Whichever one is heavier is going to drop, and the way to solve this is to slide the telescope on the dovetail and saddle plate forward or back until you can release it and neither the front end or the back end drops. Now, if you're using a top end mount, you don't have to worry about this next step. However, if you're just getting started and you're using an entry level equatorial mount, perfect balance may not be the right thing for you. You'll find that with many mounts, you have a situation where the gear teeth do not exactly mesh up, meaning you get what's called gear chatter when the tooth of one gear moves back and forth between two opposing teeth on the other gear. What you want to do is actually make the right ascension axis slightly east heavy. If you think about it, as everything is tracking from east to west through the sky, gravity is acting downward on the east side. If you make the mount slightly east heavy, then it's going to keep the gear teeth meshed a lot better than if you allow it to float in between teeth. If you're doing guided astrophotography, you also have to consider declination balance. You can run into the same issue where you send a guide command and the telescope essentially floats because you're between teeth on the declination gear. The way to fix that is to slightly imbalance the mount in declination as well. Now there's no real consensus on this, but I and others at OPT like to make the telescope slightly back heavy. The main idea for this is the front of your telescope is always pointed some vector of up. That's where the stars are, that's what you want to shoot, right? So the rest position is gravity acting down on the back end of the telescope. What that means is if you slide the telescope in such a way that the back end is slightly heavier, then the teeth engage much more frequently and you don't have that gear chatter with teeth floating in between positions. 
Well, that's all for today on balancing your equatorial mount, and I hope you learned a lot. I hope that this benefits you and you can get better pictures your next time out on the next clear night. If you have any questions about this video or about other aspects of astrophotography, don't hesitate to give me an email at chris at optcorp.com. That's my first name, C-H-R-I-S at optcorp.com. Or if it's easier for you, give us a call and you can talk to any one of our telescope experts who can assist you in your goal to take better astrophotos every time you go out. From all of us here at Oceanside Photo and Telescope, keep looking up. Thank you.